What's up, Ozones? Welcome to the Ozone, and welcome to the Ultimate Fazbear Frights Iceberg. Now, I've looked online, and I have never seen a Fazbear Frights Iceberg video done in the history of time, so I thought I'd be the first one to do it. If you guys have any other additions to this iceberg that you would like to see in the future, I might do more parts, but this is all of the things that I could think of personally. This is my very own iceberg, of course. Uh, if you don't know how an iceberg works, essentially, just like a real life iceberg, all of the stuff that is really easy to understand and anybody kind of in the fan base that reads these books will notice is gonna be right at the top. And then the lower and lower down you get, the darker things, the things that are hidden away from you and the small secrets that you're not gonna find on a first read are down below. So we're gonna start from the top and of course go right down to the bottom. Remember to subscribe if you enjoy this video and a full photo of the full iceberg will be in the description if you wanna download it and uh, show it to your friends or whatever. <laughs> so without further ado, let's go to section A. Stitchline Games. This is the theory that the Stitch Wraith Stingers and the stories that are all connected to it all take place in the game's timeline. Uh, and that starts with the Man in Room 1280, which is an accurate representation of Ultimate Custom Night, and explains the origins of Glitch Trap as well as setting up the rest of the Fazbear Fright series. Of course, that story ends with Afton kind of exploding everywhere into the Fazbear Entertainment Distribution Center, and that is how he gets into FNAF VR, FNAF AR, and of course, that is how uh, he, it's how Andrew becomes Fetch and Afton eventually comes back later in the Stitch Wraith Stingers. Now, there is quite a lot of evidence for this and I would suggest going and watching other videos on it or researching this on the internet. Just to put it simply, I think this is a really good theory and I personally believe it 100%. I think it's really cool that the books could fit in right there in the games. Uh, Scott Cawthon himself said that these books were supposed to fill in blanks of the past, which they do if, it, if Stitchline Games is true, and that some of the stories are connected directly to the games while others aren't. And I think that that's kind of clear confirmation already that these books are more connected than you may think. Andrew's Origins So Jake and Andrew were the two souls that are present in the Stitch Wraith, in the original description for Friendly Face, there was a child named Andrew, and fans assumed that this would be an Andrew origin story. Unfortunately, the name was changed to Edward for the final version of the story. In the new kid, there is also a boy with curly black hair, shown in the Golden Freddy suit. Curly black hair, like we see in The Man in Room 1280, with the boy with the alligator mask. And this is believed to be Andrew, of course, potentially showing that the body was stuffed into a suit after being murdered. And a lot of people believe that Andrew is a Cassidy parallel, which is something that you'll have to kind of overcome if you do believe Stitchline Games. The Agony. In the Ultimate Guide, the Afton amalgamation seen in the Stitch Wraith Stingers was confirmed to be called The Agony. And that was also how we found out the name of the epilogues to be the Stitch Wraith Stingers. Before we were just calling them the epilogues. Now I'm in a good flow of calling it the Stitch Wraith Stingers, but I think that the Afton amalgamation is a way cooler the name than the Agony. Snack Space. The Snack Space is a fast food restaurant in the FNAF universe, which is mentioned in Into the Pit and Room for One More. Additionally, Security Breach had a location named Snack Space with the slogan, Eat Your Hunger, and funnily enough, Security Breach has multiple callbacks to the Fazbear Frights series, such as the arcade machines, and it is supposedly evidence to support Stitchline games. I think it's just kind of like the extra cherry on top, you know? It's, it's not enough by itself, but it's an extra cherry on top. Coils the Birthday Clown. Coils the Birthday Clown is an animatronic in Jump for Tickets, but strangely not an antagonist, which is very, very unusual in this book series. Coils is a very controversial character in the theorist community because people believe one of two things. The end of Jump for Tickets shows tear streaks on Coils' face, and of course Coils is a very protective animatronic. He tries to make sure that Colton doesn't go into uh, underneath the ticket pulverizer, 
Um, and this all kind of made people believe that he may be the puppet. He represents the puppet, or he was the puppet before. Conversely, he is stated to have lemon and lime stripes, like the hat on the Ennard mask. This theory suggests that Quills the birthday clown was an old animatronic, and in the end his face would be used by Ennard in Sister Location. I personally believe that one with Ennard, but MatPat believes that it's the puppet, and in his video it was very controversial because he straight up said it as a fact. It, it, was, one of the, it was one of the three theory videos, and he went through the three theories, that's completely fine, and then straight up said, oh by the way, did you know that Coils the Clown was once the first name of the puppet, or whatever. Uh, he said it as a fact, which is something that theorists um, shouldn't do. <laughs> 1985. 1985 is the only year that is specifically mentioned in the entire Fazbear Fright series. First was Into the Pit as the year of the missing children's incident, and the second was in Sergio's Lucky Day, which was his last year of high school. The events of Sergio's Lucky Day take place 10 years later. This probably has a bigger meaning, and personally I believe that the missing children's incident was actually in 1985. But, uh, you know, that's down to you to decide. It is very strange that, that is the only year that is ever mentioned in the Pass of a Fright series, but this is FNAF, so they're never going to give you clear dates. <laughs> Eleanor. Rennell is Dr. Talbert's daughter, but when Eleanor impersonates her in the Stitch Rate Singers, she has a different appearance. Funnily enough, when Rennell was first introduced into the series, many caught on to the fact that Rennell spelled backwards is Eleanor, E-L-L-E-N-E-R, leading people to correctly guess that Eleanor was the main villain of the series before it was directly told to us. Jeremy's birthday. In Prankster, Jeremiah goes to work for his birthday to find out that his cake has the wrong name on it. Instead of Jeremiah, it says Jeremy, which is a clear reference to Jeremy from FNAF VR, who had a similar fate to the other characters in this story. I like to think that Prankster can't be canon because it is a complete retelling of what happened in FNAF VR. Obviously Glitchstrap is the main antagonist in Prankster, which I didn't catch on to until the Ultimate Guide came out, so... Maybe Glitchstrap in Prankster should be on the lowest of the iceberg for me. <laughs> and then she started to dance. Dance With Me's final line is, and then she started to dance, which most assumed gave a happy ending. However, a lot of people interpret the line differently, making this an ambiguous ending. It could be literal, but it also could represent Isabella becoming possessed by Ballora. After all, Ballora was only seconds away from catching Casey. I'm not sure if I believe this though, because it seems like it's a story that should have a happy ending and does have a happy ending, even though Casey was a pretty bad person, I think she should have gone what she deserved. Kelsey. In the new kid, Kelsey is springlocked and shown to be killed in the suit directly. However, the end of the story reveals that Kelsey is completely fine and he's at a new school meeting new friends. It seems like Kelsey maybe supernatural in some way, or somehow he faked his death to inflict pain and guilt to multiple people. It's clearly an endless loop. There were only five books. Originally, Scott announced that there were only going to be five Fazbear Frights books, making The Man in Room 1280 the final story. However, there are suspicions that he always planned to release 11, knowing how long the story of the Stitch Wraith was. There is, of course, also a 12th book, Felix the Shark, which contains three scrapped stories. We're not even too sure about the nature of them, were they completed and then just thrown out at the last minute, or were they thrown out but completed in the last minute. It's kind of weird, we don't know much information about that, but there you go. And that is section A, I have a feeling that you probably knew all of them, uh, or at least most of them. Uh, we're going to be going into section B, and I feel like you're going to know a little less. I don't know how balanced this iceberg is, because, you know, it's all my interpretation of it. Let me know in the comments below. But, uh, yeah, you should know a few less on these. Exclusive Books A Million cover. Book retailer Books A Million released the puppet carver 
with an exclusive variant cover with inverted colors and this weird rip effect on the on the page this book is the only one that has two different covers but of course you do also have some other exclusive books right at the beginning of course with the into the pit and fetch books used to have little artworks before each story they don't really do that anymore uh, because you know ink uh, and also they were in black and white because ink they didn't want to have to color in the the pictures but uh, we did get the images in the ultimate guide if you want to see them the breaking wheel art the breaking wheel was originally intended to be the titular story of the seventh book the cliffs according to Scott the cover art changed to the cliffs because the art for the breaking wheel was too scary it had nothing to do with how gruesome it was it was just how scary it was that's what he said the raven the Raven is a story that is mentioned in Count the Ways by Edgar Allan Poe and is about a supernatural raven who haunts the writer in their grief. This was very clearly the inspiration for the story Blackbird, where a supernatural black bird haunts Noel after Sam is hit by a train. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary, over many quaint to sub... Yeah, I don't know the rest. Jinx the Cat. In Into the Pit, Spring Bonnie holds Oswald's dad's appearance, but he is the only one who is able to see through the illusion, except for his cat, Jinx. This still has many theorists wandering to this day, and honestly, it's a great story to start with, with so much mystery going straight into the series. Mirror Susie. Although Coming Home shows the tragic lifestyle of a family in grief of the missing children's incident, the story cannot be in the same continuity as the games due to there being contradicting elements. One of these elements is the description of Susie, who in Coming Home has brown eyes and brown hair, while in the games she has blonde hair and blue eyes. Stinger Moot Stinger Moot is an anagram of testing room from the story Prankster. Strangely, the ultimate guide points specifically to the anagrams Stinger Moot and even more frights, suggesting that they may have a deeper meaning, but this has not been solved to this day. Although, it does say Stinger, so I'm thinking Citrate Stingers, and it does say even more frights, so I'm thinking Fazbear Frights, so it could be alluding to there being a second Fazbear Frights series, Tales from the Peterplex, but why? <laughs> why this story? Um, so that doesn't really make much sense, really. Illusion Discs. The ultimate guide suggests that the pendant in To Be Beautiful and Lucky Boy in Sergio's Lucky Day have illusion discs. In the final Stitch Wraith Stinger, Larson hears a strange ambient noise emitting from the pendant, which is similar to how illusion discs functioned in the novel trilogy. The Scoop ARG. Now before we get into this, an ARG is an alternate... Wait, alternate reality game. So it's essentially a multimedia mystery uh, that, you, that you have to like do research for, you have to find little clues, there was a Gravity Falls ARG that was really cool. Basically, the scoop told us that if the creator wanted us to know, he would tell us. That's the main quote from the scoop. Most likely implying that we shouldn't look too deep into things, like Mr. Hippo said in Ultimate Custom Night. MatPat took this meaning the complete wrong way though, uh, theorizing that there was a scrapped FNAF ARG similar to the events of the scoop. This led many fans to start calling restaurants in Utah and made a huge controversy. For the record, there is no ARG and you should never trespass, you should never prank call anybody or connect video games to real life unless the creator tells you it's okay. Fritz. In Sea Bonnies, the Bonnies engulf Mott's pet goldfish, who is named Fritz. Now, theorists believe that this could parallel the events of the games, knowing that there was a security guard and a missing child named Fritz. The ultimate guide, though, actually says that the two elements seem unrelated. 
Thank goodness for that. <laughs> Logbook Chica. In what we found, there is a broken Chica animatronic that people connect with the Chica image in the logbook. The Chica had never appeared in the games before or the books, so it makes sense that it would be part of the horror attraction. Another image from the Freddy Files was actually used in the ultimate guide for In the Flesh. Strangely. It's kind of the opposite of what happens in In the Flesh, but who cares. Allmart. The Allmart is a general convenience store in the Fazbear Fright series, which is most likely a spin-off of Walmart, uh, and it is shown directly in Dance With Me and The Cliffs. And that's how those two stories are connected and how it's connected overall to the entire series, because Dance With Me is connected to the stage race singers, blah blah blah, The Revengers. In He Told Me Everything, Josh mentions a movie called The Revengers, which is supposedly a parody of The Avengers, and this is similar to Into the Pit with Zendrelix vs Mecha Zendrelix, which is a parody of Godzilla vs Mechagodzilla. K-pop. In Pizza Kid, there are mentions of posters on Peyton's wall with a K-pop group on it. On her walls, posters of boys from her favourite K-pop group smiled down at her like they were inviting her to abandon her drudgery and go dancing with them instead. I'm pretty sure Kimberly in Fetch also says Gucci, which is just great. Love these references. And there we go, there's section B. Uh, there's probably a few things you didn't know there, but in section C it should get even worse. <laughs> uh, it's, we're gonna start getting deeper and you're gonna completely lose all sense of famil familiarity. Yeah, Tex. An image preview for the full Fazbear Fright box set was leaked, but the books appeared to have multiple formatting errors, such as spelling mistakes, incorrect numbers, incorrect colours, but most prevalently, Fetch was misspelled with or misprinted with the name Tex. How do you get that wrong? <laughs> Trunk in the attic. In the Stitch Wraith Stingers, while Larson is fighting Eleanor, they appear to be in an attic with old collected items, boxes for Christmas, and an old vintage trunk. This is the only scene which cannot be easily connected back to a story in the Fazbear Fright series. The first option is it could be Count the Ways, where Grandpa is a collector, and it takes place at Christmas. But there is never mention of any attic or any trunk. The other option is that it connects to Lally's game, and if you have read Lally's game, you'll understand what I mean. There's still a, a few problems with it, but it could be that, uh, signifying that Eleanor could be part of Tales from the Pizzaplex. Charlotte. In Lonely Freddy, there is a character named Charlotte who cannot eat chocolate, most likely due to an allergy. Someone proceeds to give her chocolate, and she pukes on Alec in Lonely Freddy, ultimately sending him into the garbage can. Of course, I do mention this because uh, Charlotte is a similar name to Charlotte Emily, or Charlie in the books, and uh, the puppet, yeah, that whole story in the games. Uh, could be the same Charlotte. Don't know about that. Maybe the reason she was outside was because she was scared of chocolate or something. Who knows? In the flesh plush trap. Before the human plush trap chaser was revealed to be crafted by Eleanor, many theorists believe that the in the flesh baby was the plush trap chaser. This theory would make sense with the product of in the flesh being a baby spring trap, which is partly human. Yeah, room for one more, intended to be the titular story. The cover for the second Fazbear Frights graphic novel shows art for Room for One More. In early copies of Into the Pit, it was said that Room for One More was originally intended to be the titular story for book three, but later was replaced with 1.35am. Peyton is missing. In the book's description for Pizza Kit, it says that Marley's friend goes missing, but it's actually Marley who ends up missing in the story. So, uh, yeah, there's it, it's some sort of formatting error, or they just completely messed up. Well, also, 
they do actually mess up multiple times in the story where they mix up the two names. So I don't really know what happened there. There were just a lot of misspellings and mistakes in that book anyway, so there you go. It's a boy.exe. There are multiple instances of foreshadowing in In the Flesh. Matt and his ex-wife split up because he didn't want to have a baby. Springtrap in the game is described to be a child of Matt's rage, and of course the program found by Gene Jr. is called It's a Boy.exe. The Freddy Above There's a poem in Sea Bonnies, which Rory wrote, that goes like this. When I saw my Sea Bonnies, I felt love. It was like a gift from Freddy Above. They're super cool, and they make me glad. I like that, because I hate being sad. Dominic in Gumdrop Angel, Angel ate the gumdrop nose, and her love interest, Dominic, who works at Freddy's, told her that she needed to get back to Freddy's as soon as possible. Upon entering, Dominic immediately shuts her in the box, letting out tears, implying that he knows what is going to happen to her. It's strange to think that the employees are aware of the cruel arts of Fazbear Entertainment, but they are too small and insignificant to be able to do anything about it. Ralpho Bleeds Bunny Call's twist ending was that the person that ran the Bunny Call activity overslept that morning, meaning that what happened to Bob through the night was completely supernatural. Strangely, however, the book points out that it's clear Ralpho was bleeding through the suit, so was it really supernatural? And if it was just someone playing a prank, then who was it? Sylvester Pine In the puppet carver, the machine is actually based off of Sage's novel with the same name. The story is about a wooden Pinocchio-like puppet named Sylvester Pine who pays the fixer to gain the ability to touch and feel emotions. He is connected to a machine uh, and he feels all the pain in his life or whatever until he feels everything. He feels emotions, he feels great and it ends with him holding his newborn daughter in his hands. And just like Jack in the full story, the machine turns him into a new person with a greater sense of humanity. It was clearly written in this story to create a parallel to show that Jack was becoming more human Almost, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. Balloon Boy Euphemisms. I love this one. In Jumper Tickets, there are two other arcade games that are specifically mentioned in the restaurant, other than the Ticket Pulverizer, of course. They are named BB's Ball Drop and Dee Dee's Fishing Hole, most likely after BB's Air Adventure and Dee Dee's Fishing Hole from FNAF 3 and FNAF World. Uh, they are also, of course, infamous for having strange names that can be taken as euphemisms. And that is a great place to end for section C. <laughs> ah! Section D, I, I think, is where most people are going to kind of forget a lot of the things here. Uh, or learn new stuff. That's what you're here for, I guess. So, uh, let, let's get into section D. Take me with you. In Sister Location's Custom Night, there's a voice that says, Take me with you. Take me with you? It was never clear whose voice line this was, but Room for One More had the mini arenas saying the exact same line, so I think, I think it's clear who it was now. Count the ways in AR. In FNAF AR, Freddy says the line, Scream all you want, no one can hear you which is a line that is spoken by Funtime Freddy in Count the Ways. Unfortunately, we still don't have Funtime Freddy in FNAF AR. Pete's Chewing Gum In Step Closer, it is mentioned multiple times that Pete is chewing gum. In the Survival Logbook, it is presented that Mike likes to chew gum excessively, so this creates another connection, suggesting that Pete is a parallel to Michael Afton. Amber Amber is a character in Room for One More and Blackbird, but in Blackbird, she actually asks the question, do you have room for one more? <laughs> I love this one. <laughs> Foxy's Pirate Palooza. In the survival logbook, there is a coupon ticket named Foxy's Pirate Palooza. In Lonely Freddy, this exact 
coupon voucher is directly mentioned. Evan. The name Evan is used in Bunny Cool, The Real Jake, Together Forever and Kids at Play. After The Real Jake was released, there was a convoluted and controversial finding in the survival logbook that led many to believe that Evan is the name of the bite victim. However, this is still not confirmed. You'll find reading through these books yourself that there are a lot of names that are reused. Uh, I know that Mike is definitely a name that is used a lot, like Mike is used in Into the Pit, there's an Uncle Mike in Jump for Tickets, there's a Michael in The Real Jake, uh, that's three that I can think of off the top of my head, and I know that there are more, so, oh, and of course there's a Mike in You're the Band, uh, so you're gonna get a lot of reused names, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they have to be the same person, or that it doesn't mean they have to be parallels, or whatever, there are special cases though, however, like we've already talked about with Prankster, uh, where Jeremiah had Jeremy written on the cake. It was clearly kind of like a parallel to Jeremy in FNAF VR. Hudson's Warp. Hudson has had a terrible backstory after his father committed suicide, his stepfather beat him, and teachers and school kids bullied him. As a result, he ended up threatening his stepfather with a knife and burning the entire house down, killing everybody except himself. This is an amazing example and reference to the African proverb, the child who is not embraced by the village will burn it down to feel its warmth. Just think about that for a second. I'll, I'll, I'll give you like three seconds. I don't have a watch. Schrodinger's cat. The cat in Friendly Face is named Faraday after scientist Michael Faraday, who studied electromagnetism, and actually, the Schrodinger's cat thought experiment is also mentioned twice throughout the story, relating to the friendly face Faraday in the box that you could argue is both dead and alive. And that's section D. We got through that pretty quickly, I think. Uh, let's get straight into section E. Uh, a lot of these, I don't think you're going to know, but you might know. I, I don't know how big of a fan you are, obviously, so if you're not that big of a fan, then maybe you won't know any of these, but if you are, then I'm sorry. <laughs> Larson saved Sam. Now, in Blackbird, Sam is reportedly hit by a train, only to have survived with a broken leg. However, in the Stitch Wraith Stingers, Larson pushes Sam in the Blackbird costume into a ditch to save him from the oncoming train. Strangely, this would either mean one of two things, Either time travel is possible, or the events of the memory are happening in real time, which doesn't really make sense because it's a memory. It's also possible that Sam would have survived without Larson's help in the first place, but that's kind of unlikely, so we have a weird situation here. 135 meaning. In 1.35am, Delilah's friend mentions how every number has a meaning, but doesn't believe it because she is very superstitious. Taking the number 135, you can split it into 13 and 5, and it becomes Charlie's birthday in the novels, the 13th of May. This makes sense knowing that Ella, from the novels, is the main antagonist, and that she was the first Charlie bot. It's also funny to note that this date was when update 2 of FNAF World was released and it landed on Friday the 13th. Blackbird Art Error In the bottom right hand corner of Blackbird there is a slight error with the feathers. I didn't see this until the other day so it's not a huge deal I guess <laughs> but it's kind of funny. Dr. Little Dr. Little is the man responsible for the yearly science experiments at West Valley High School in He Told Me Everything. He is described to be a short, bald, and energetic individual, which is why many believe that he is also Stanley's boss in Room for One More with the same description. This would make sense knowing that the bodies of the children who were replaced with Fazgu were put into black bio waste bags which are found right outside of Circus Baby's entertainment and rentals in Room for One More. Stanley mentions how these bags smell like death, birthing the horrible consequences. The description for In the Flesh gives a huge clue to the final events of the story. 
Matt redirects the residual anger over his many failed relationships into a game, and ends up birthing the horrible consequences. Flo's fabulous eatery. In Find Player 2, Freddy's was closed down and replaced with a place named Flo's Fabulous Eatery. It is said to be the home of the Leaning Tower of Pancakes, and it is Holstein cow themed. I don't know what Holstein is or Holstein. Uh, I am mentioning this because it's pretty comedic that they have an eatery when they also have Flo's Glossy Floss as shown in Pizzeria Simulator. It's kind of like you eat at the eatery and then you're going to need to go to the dentist, so they also have a dentist service, so they're covering everything. <laughs> eat her alive. The description for Pizza Kit gives a huge clue as well to the events of the story. Marley's best friend goes missing on a tour of the Freddy's Pizza Factory. She knows what really happened, but her guilt isn't the only thing threatening to eat her alive. We slash us pronouns. In Together Forever, Jessica and Brittany both end up springlocked by a Rosie pork chop, and Rosie ends up imitating Jessica's voice, showing possession. However, both faces are there together forever, and Rosie ends up using we slash us pronouns, implying that both girls ended up possessing the pig animatronic. And there you go, there is section E all done. We are diving straight into the final section now, section F. And if you know any of these, then make sure you tell me in the comments below. Also, remember to comment if you have any other additions that you would like me to make to this iceberg. I might make a version 2 later down the line if I get many suggestions. The Demonic Ritual At the beginning of Step Closer, when Pete is with his brother Chuck in the maintenance room of Freddy's, he notices some dark melted candles on the floor with strange black markings. Chuck asks if they are symbols but the two just move on and it is never brought up again. This could imply that there is some sort of cult or it could be related to Eleanor. Now, remember in that story, it was kind of like a curse that was on the main character who, who's, oh, Pete. I was gonna say who's, whose name I've forgotten, but Pete, uh, he kind of, there was this weird curse going on and it wasn't really explained until, of course, Eleanor came about. So it could be some of Eleanor's doing or it could be literally a curse, some kind of cult, but I probably sway more towards the Eleanor side. And as Margie pointed out in the Stitch Raid Stingers, the Simon Closet from The Real Jake also had these strange black symbols on the inside that never really got explained. Fake Marley. There exists a theory that the Marley that we see at the end of Pizza Kit is a different Marley to the one that we saw at the beginning. The ending showed us that it was all just a prank, but she mentions how she now has a boyfriend when she says she doesn't have a boyfriend earlier on in the story. It's possible that this is a fake Marley, which would somewhat explain how she survived and disappeared from the face of the earth for so long. Julius never died. In the breaking wheel, we never actually see Julius get killed in the suit. There is a theory that the Julius exoskeleton throughout the story isn't actually real, but rather a figment of Reed's imagination, which would explain why he looks exactly how Reed thought he would look, and why the robot's placement in the doll's house matches up perfectly to Julius's placement outside the real house. I think it could be like a Blackbird situation, where it's all an agony manifestation. Hell, even Eleanor could be behind that one, but we don't know for sure. Don't cut off your nose to spite your face. The ending of Sergio's Lucky Day is foreshadowed by one of Sergio's co-workers, where he warns him not to cut off your nose to spite your face. Getting under the skin. In Sea Bonnies, one of the first sentences describes that Mott never really liked Freddy Fazbear's pizza because it always had a way of getting under the skin, which clearly foreshadows the later events. I love the foreshadowing in these books. And I'm a piñata. The ending of Gumdrop Angel has an extremely large amount of foreshadowing as well, and this is my favourite one. Firstly, one of Angel's drama teachers tells her that the audiences are going to eat her up. Also, when she is driving back to Freddy's, she encounters a man who calls her Honey. 
sugar, sugar. The biggest one that I found the funniest, however, is when Angel's mum says that she is happy with Myron, Angel's stepfather, and Angel replies with, yeah, and I'm a piñata. The new kid slithering. In The New Kid, it is touched upon that there sounds to be some slithering in the walls at the pizzeria. It was never really brought up again, and it is left without any explanation at all, though it could just be a horror element that is there for the sake of just being there. But, Fazgu, Eleanor, and Andrew. <laughs> Incorrect digits of Pi. In Friendly Face, in order to calm down after the death of his friend and his pet, Edward decides to recite the digits of Pi. However, in the book it is actually inaccurate. There's a section that goes 169399937, but in the book Edward actually says 1693937. It's unknown whether this is intentional or not, but it's most likely a mistake on behalf of the writers. But also technically that number is in pi, it would probably just be a million digits in, and I don't think Edward is reciting a million digits of pi. I'm sorry, Edward. <laughs> and there we go, that is the full iceberg that I have provided you. Uh, let me know what are your favourite entries in this. I have a lot of, um, like, I have a lot of compassion for... Compassion? Is that the right word? I, I really, really like the foreshadowing ones, because you can, like, it, it, it creates this kind of paranoia in your head where you, where you start to read the stories now and you kind of want to find this foreshadowing before you find the ending. Uh, I like that. I like that a lot. Um, so yeah, tell me what your favourites are. Tell me if there's any that I missed and that I should add later on. Maybe I'll make a part two or a better iceberg. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure you like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you later. Goodbye.